For years, Ethiopia has been at odds with its downstream neighbors, Egypt and Sudan, over a $5 billion megadam that it constructed on the largest tributary of the Nile River. September saw the completion of the fourth phase of filling a reservoir behind the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam that holds 74 billion cubic meters, 2.6 trillion cubic feet. Prime Minister Abi Ahmed claimed this procedure was carried out despite external pressure. Even though the project is essentially complete, tensions are likely to endure because Ethiopia now controls flows along a vital regional river. About 30 kilometers from the Sudanese border, Ethiopia began building the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the Blue Nile in 2011. The dam would double Ethiopia's electrical output and create more than 5,000 megawatts of electricity, making it the largest hydroelectric dam in Africa. Midway through 2020, Ethiopia started filling the reservoir for the 475-foot, 145-meter, dam. In this video, we will discuss the controversy surrounding the construction of this dam and the conflicts it has brought about in neighboring Egypt and Sudan. If you are new to this channel, do well to like and share the video and hit that subscribe button to join our channel. In a mostly arid region that is rapidly expanding in population, and susceptible to drought and climate change, the Nile is the most significant supply of fresh water. The 4,000-mile river provides up to 97% of Egypt's water needs, and a large portion of the people in eastern Sudan depend on it to survive. Ethiopia depends on a 5,150-megawatt hydropower plant on its new dam to support its industrial industries and help provide electricity to 60% of its population without access. In 2022, the facility started producing electricity, part of which will be sold to nearby nations. After the rainy season began, Ethiopia gathered almost 5 billion cubic meters of water in just one week after closing the dam's gates for the first time in July 2020. Sudanese officials said that the flooding that followed the drought could have been prevented if the dam had been filled more gradually. Over the next three years, Ethiopia was able to capture more water. To guarantee sufficient water flow downstream, Egypt desired the filling to be drawn out over a longer time frame. Even though reaching a timeline would have benefited all three nations, several mediation attempts including the US and African Union ended without a resolution. Ethiopia declared that it was free to use any water that passed through its territory, that it was not required to negotiate with anyone, and that Egypt was acting as though it was the only country with access to the Nile. Egypt's share of the river's flow was increased to about 66% by a 1959 deal, with 22% going to Sudan. Ethiopia does not recognize the validity of the accords and was not a party to them. The conditions of a 1959 pact that divided the majority of the water between Egypt and Sudan have also been challenged. Beginning in 2011, the dam and hydropower project served as the foundation for Abi's development push. If he gave in to domestic pressure to postpone the project's commissioning, he would risk losing support at home. Water access is a national security issue for Egypt, according to President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, who has emphasized that it is a red line that cannot be crossed. Egypt's foreign minister Sami Shaukri claimed during a speech to the UN General Assembly in September that Ethiopia's ongoing dam filling was an effort to impose reality on the ground. His ministry has accused Ethiopia of disobeying its neighbors' rights to water security that are guaranteed by international law and of breaking a 2015 deal that required an agreement to be obtained with Egypt and Sudan before dam filling began. Sudan later sided with Egypt, even though it had previously accepted Ethiopia's promises that the dam would help reduce flooding and that it would benefit from the power generated. The conflict between Sudan's army and an opposing paramilitary group that broke out in April 2023 has diverted the country's government's focus from the project. Ethiopia, whose economy has grown at one of the quickest rates in Africa in recent years, maintains that the dam won't stop the water's movement forward. But Egypt worries that while the 74 billion cubic meters of capacity reservoir fills, its supplies will be diminished. Sudan has cautioned that millions of lives will be at great risk if Ethiopia fills the dam unilaterally, and Egypt views the dam as a threat to its very existence. Ten years of negotiations have yielded no agreement. Egypt has minimized using force to break the impasse. At the UN, Shaukri stated that his nation is still open to negotiations. However, following a round in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, in late September, there was no progress. Silshir Bekele, an official from Ethiopia, 
tweeted that there had been a sharing of constructive ideas and that his nation is dedicated to talks. Most analysts believe it is highly improbable that the Egyptians would consider an airstrike and that destroying the dam would result in catastrophic flooding downstream. In the current stalemate, the Arab League has taken the side of Egypt and Sudan and is calling for an agreement that will safeguard their water supplies. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam problem has strained relations between nations in the area and has larger geopolitical ramifications. Tensions have increased due to the lack of a complete agreement on the operation of the dam, and there is a chance that they will escalate into a full-blown confrontation. The significance of reaching a diplomatic resolution that takes into account the interests of all parties concerned is highlighted by this circumstance. Concerns over its possible effects on the environment have also been raised throughout the building. Opponents contend that the reservoir created by the project will cause residents to be uprooted, arable land to be lost, and river ecosystems to change. Furthermore, the impoundment of the dam might trap sediment, which would harm farmland downstream and lessen the river's normal nutrient replenishment. In September of 2023, a two-day meeting was held at the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa to address issues concerning the dam. The talks however ended on an inconclusive note, with Ethiopia pledging to continue talks, in good faith. In a statement released by its Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation, Egypt said the latest round of discussions concerning the $5 billion dam concluded without making any significant progress. Ethiopia, the statement noted, still opposed compromise solutions or internationally agreed-upon technical arrangements that could address its specific interests related to the GERD without encroaching upon the rights and interests of the downstream nations. The statement added that the Egyptian negotiating team remains committed to constructive negotiations with clearly defined objectives. The United Nations says Egypt could run out of water by 2025 and parts of Sudan are increasingly vulnerable to drought as a result of climate change. Egyptian Foreign Minister Sami Shoukri, whose country relies on the Great Nile for 97% of its water needs, said in an address to the UN General Assembly that Cairo wants a binding agreement on the dam. Thank you for watching to the end. Please do well to leave a review and comment on what you think about this video. Until next time, stay safe.